Quick take on Tencent Q4 earnings and I'm a shareholder so I'm biased but I'm also not super deep into the due diligence into Tencent and their numbers. However, um, you may know Tencent and Alibaba from the, the news lately about the tech crackdowns and if you are following Western media, these two companies are basically uh, supposed to go out of business and not um, do well for their shareholders anymore. And while the last thing is certainly true, given the large sell-off that these two companies have experienced, still the question remains like how uh, well is, uh, are these companies doing on the bottom line of the business. So let's have a look at some numbers. So this is a rough overview of the fourth quarter showed 144 billion yuan in revenues. So that's a slightly miss to the forecast of 145 billion yuan. Um, however, the net income was at 95 billion yuan while it was forecasted at um, 31 billion. So that's a huge um, upside here and a huge um, beat on that number or metric. Also, the operational profit was at 110 billion versus forecast 41 billion and the net other gains are at 86 billion versus 15 billion. Meanwhile, Tencent gave a little bit of an outlook that they expect that the minor protection measures which they have um, set in place are going to be fully digested in the second half of 2022 for domestic games. Because of course it's a big question how much those kind of regulations will actually impact the current business of Tencent. One example would be like if you are a WeChat user and you want to click on a link that is uh, supposed to go to a Taobao or a Tmall link. So this is the Alibaba ecosystem. Uh, previously you couldn't follow that link. It wouldn't uh, lead anywhere and this is why the regulators are stepping in and saying like these are too big of a monopoly. It's not fair competition. We are breaking this up and Tencent should allow their users to actually access the Alibaba ecosystem. Then in the field of gaming we have um, yeah, measures like uh, the gaming times and stuff like that. And all of this is of course weighing on the business of Tencent or supposed to make them less profitable. And so it's surprising to see this huge um, beat on the profitability level there. And that can be explained because that is uh, mostly because of an asset sale um, for Tencent uh, that they have sold off the JD business stake. While if we look a little bit deeper and uh, on the financial highlights, we can see that the value added services um, improved year over year 7%. Online advertisement is uh, uh, down minus 13%. So this is where they really feel the impact. And uh, surprisingly, fintech and business services are up 25%. And then if you also look into quarter um, over quarter metrics here, you can see for example, domestic games is seeing an impact there. And then if you're looking at a non-IFRS accounting, you can actually see that our operating profit has over year decreased minus 13% and quarterly minus 19%. And so the results are somewhat mixed and they do show an impact of some of these um, regulations and uh, overall the business segments that Tencent is active in. However, if you look at a broader picture, like um, including the sales of the assets, which is um, I think something legit to do, um, it is providing a benefit to the shareholders and at some point I think also needs to be reflected again in the share price for Tencent. And I'm actually optimistic that they will find ways of uh, pivoting their business model um, in areas necessary, be innovative, find new revenue streams and also as Tencent has promised here, um, find a recovery in some of their sections such as gaming. And so I think the main takeaway here is don't always listen just to the media headlines that are very doomsday like. Um, sometimes the reality sets in can be quite different. Anyways, that's my quick take on Tencent. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one.